them in IG tomorrow. Now, a lot of amazing teams in there in this one. Yeah. We picked this semi-final, quite frankly, because we're, we're hoping that it's going to be the closer of the two games. Uh, that's what we're thinking. I mean, if we look at their current standings in GPL, Taipei Sniper's doing a lot better overall, but the two games that they've actually played against each other so mm -hmm. far this season, they're one for one. Yeah, and... I'm actually curious to see what get what's going to get bound out here for this game because we were talking about it earlier, Joe. There's a lot of similarities between both these teams and many different lanes. Also, wh who's actually going to be playing uh, for each side? For TPS, we were curious, would we see O'Real? Would we see Wins, uh, who just came from Gamina Bears? And it looks like we're actually going to see Wins be playing today. Yeah, Wins, uh, as you said, with the Gamma Bears at the World Championships for Season 3. Came in here technically as a sub, but has been playing for the Snipers yeah. since uh, pretty much week three that they were going in their first game against Full Louis, which they won. And they're since that 4-for-1, four funnily enough, with their only loss coming against the Singapore Sentinels. So uh, we see the picks coming out in here. Morgana and Jax banned out, first of all. We have been seeing... A lot of support, Morgana, out here yeah. in uh, Southeast Asia. On the other side, Kale, which Cryonix has been playing quite a lot, and also the Annie, which actually crosses into both of the support roles for these uh, two teams. Yeah, and I really like seeing the Morgana ban. We saw earlier on, uh, just with the game prior, how really effective it can be. And Mistake did play it in week number two against them, where they won 15 to one in kills. So I don't want to go necessarily up against that. Yeah. Um, but the Annie ban, just like you said, I, I actually really like seeing that because both supports can really play it. And we've seen just last week in Cologne how a game changer can be with Annie if you hit a four or five man stun. It certainly can. Let's have a look at the final ban here coming out for TPS. Now, Shivana was taken away by the Singapore Sentinels and it's not really a surprise to see Renekton taken out, actually. Both of these teams play a lot of Renekton. Everyone plays a lot of Renekton right now. It's incredibly yeah. strong. He has the highest pick or ban rate, actually, at 90.9%. So that kind of shows you, at least in the GPL, sorry, let me clarify, in the GPL is a 90.9. So kind of shows you exactly why he's picked or banned so often, or at least how these teams really respect that champion. But we do see Shen here, and it's kind of, if it's not Renekton here in GPL, or at least in GPL, it's going to be a Shen. My question is, what are the Type A snipers going to respond with to go up against that? Because Zonda, you know, looking at his previous matches, he's played pretty much Shen. Uh, he's played uh, also Renekton. And... He's played quite a few other things, but he likes these toppy, or toppy, toppy. Top, <laughs> these tanky top laners to really play. Toppy tanky laners. Uh, that's, we'll see what comes out from that one. Uh, but for the snipers, we did see Vi being picked up and also Gragas. And we thought that Gragas might be a highly contested pick between these two teams. Got through the banning phase, was picked up in the first round of picks here by the Taipei sniper. So let's see what SGS are going to be locking in. Fiddlesticks, which is uh, among, uh, you know, for Kaling. That's basically what he's been playing, Annie, Fiddle, Thresh. Uh, are literally the only three that he's played so far <laughs> in the GPL this season. So not a surprise to see that. And also Jarvan the fourth for Hallelujah, his go-to champion in the jungle. Yeah, we were pretty much expecting that. I guarantee the Taipei snipers knew they were going to go with that kind of champion as well for the jungle. But right now, with the Grogs picked up, I'm actually kind of surprised, or not surprised, but intrigued to see it because it's actually the third most banned out champion in GPL with 19 at the moment, right behind Zed and Shen. And we've seen many different times how we can work really well for your team using that ultimate to obviously uh well obviously push the team away or use it to single out someone but we we're talking about a little bit earlier with the ping they're playing on singling out one person is very very difficult to do it is uh, because of the, the kind of unpredictability yeah. about that with the fact that we have a lot of mobile champions these days in the pool that everyone's playing so not always easy to lock down but when it's effective it is pretty damn strong. Uh, it looks like we may see a Jinx Thresh lane uh, coming out for the bottom here of Taipei Snipers and uh, certainly hovering over that one right now. Although Lulu Thresh, we'll see. It's going to be a Lulu in the end. Yeah, I'm looking at that and maybe we're going to see a Lucian or maybe Chawi's going to go with that team. Oh, he's played it actually a couple of times uh, in the GPL, which is kind of surprising. We don't really see him ever in any other er uh, areas, at least within LCS. You usually see him as a troll pick for, for Edward, whoever is that last pick. Yeah, we actually saw him in the first two games of the season. Uh, Chawi played that one with a win and a loss. The third game was against the Snipers and they actually banned out Teemo against him. Yeah. I mean, you don't. Uh, the thing is, he's one of those. He's one of those champions, at least for most people, where you know you know how to play him, obviously, but you don't necessarily know what counters him like really hard in lane, or at least you're not used to going up against him. And why go up against someone that you're not really used to playing against, and just go with something you're more uh, really used to here? But I was thinking maybe a Lucian. Obviously, gets rid of the the Lulu slow and can help you get around, help you be very mobile, and it's not a bad lane to go with Fiddlesticks here, but. 
him hovering over Teemo, like that actually can be a legitimate pick, so I don't want to count that one out. Well, he'll actually switch there in the last second. He's going to be picking up Lucian, who we, oh we've my just gosh. seen coming in as pretty much number one. Plus the Malphite here for Cryonics I'm thinking of in one the thing. Lane. I'm thinking of poor Reckless on the on the, the bad end of that with Alex which playing Malphite, constantly going over him after every single fight. And with the DFG he had, it, he pretty much would one-shot him every single time. It was ridiculous. And that's a danger of a Malphite. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that actually going to be in the mid lane. If he gets rolling, though, that's the thing. If you can get there before him, we'll have to see. I thought about that was that a one. joke about rocks and rolling. It, it kind of was, but it also <laughs> kind of wasn't. Uh, Rengar, last two weeks or last two games, actually, uh, including the game against the Singapore Sentinels that the Snipers played. Zonda played that Rengar in the top lane, and they're not changing that up here today. They're going to go with it again. Yeah, and I really want to know how he's going to do against Shen. I mean, there's a couple of different things you can do. Usually, I typically see most Rengars level the Bullet Strike, the E. You can do that free range harass pretty much. And then you uh, either back around level six and you go gank another lane. You go gank middle or something like that with your jungler, you go gank bottom. And then you just get straight back towards that top lane because it's really hard to kind of call Rengars missing. You expect to come back top, but if he sneaks in on you with that ultimate, it's pretty much a death. And jumps at you every 10 seconds from, from bush, bush as well. Yeah. yeah. That that's one of the annoying things, <laughs> certainly playing against that one. But uh, mm. I think everyone, you know, on pretty comfortable champions. If you look down what they've played in the past and what they're going to be bringing yeah. to the table after the bans and the picks here, everyone is pretty much on a, a comfort pick. I'm actually one thing I'm looking at in terms of uh, how these lineups are going to go is mistake on Lulu. Obviously, the extra health you get can help with the Malphite, who's trying to burst someone down, trying to combo someone down, so you can use it on your AD carry to keep them alive. But there's also a reverse order of that, where if you want to engage, pop it on a Rengar who's going to stealth in. You knock them up when they don't even see it, and it keeps them slowed, keeps them around Rengar, even with Vi, so they have a good initiate and a good disengage at the same time. It's a very, very good lineup. And the Singapore Sentinels on home soil here as well. We'll that see how true. that one uh, affects them. And how the crowd here behind us, uh, or in front of us, actually, is from where we're sat. Uh, <laughs> in front <laughs> of the, the stage, of course, the crowd, just in front of the stage, as a crowd usually is uh, at events. But, yeah, an interesting game coming up, of course. It will be best of three, just like all of the other games that we have here in the Intel Extreme Masters. Um, and, honestly, not 100% sure which way this one's going to go. The fact is, as I said, before that they are currently tied one to one in the GPL standings, although TPS are the team that are doing better overall, just two losses they've got to their name this season. Yeah, it's definitely one of those matchups matchups where you look at it and any given day any team or any one of these two teams can win it. I said to you, I think it comes down to the bands come into this game. Who gets more of the comfort picks? And right now, I'm actually leaving in favor or leaning in favor of SGS just because of that Malphite pick alone. It gives you that strong initiate. You follow it up with the fiddlesticks. As long as they get rolling, just like you said, if Malphite gets put behind, if Shen gets put behind a little bit here, they're going to be missing out on so much damage that Azubu Blaze having that uh, that Rengar in the top lane will have the ability to kind of make up for it. And we see they're just throwing out those baller strikes early on. Not really a problem, obviously, with the way that Rengar works. But are we going to see any early action? A good few wards put down on the bottom side of the map. Hallelujah, they're just throwing in the flag. We can have vision of that curved bush up on the top side. But other than that, nothing as of yet and actually two wards put down here one on the corner one in that brush and that's going to spot singapore sentinels here as they start to move up towards that top side tri bush is zonda going to jump in there onto hallelujah and that will actually <laughs> signal them to back off and there's the pressure of the rain guard jumps at you and you're scared yeah and that's what's so hard to go up against him at level one when you typically will always fight in a bush i mean you're not going to fight in the middle of a river when you have bushes to kind of surprise people with but we're gonna have some standard starts here and the double were top though that's actually I really like that. It gives him so much vision, and it prevents any sort of late invade coming of SGS. Like, you will be able to see them coming, and you'll be able to keep your own two buffs alive. But do you really need two? <laughs> Probably not. That's my question. But I'm not, not going to question these guys. Would one maybe be enough there? Either way, we are going to be seeing lane swaps coming. SGS here doing the blue buff, and we'll send Lucian and Fiddlesticks to the top side. And we will have Jinx Lulu down on the bottom side of the map here for the Taipei Snipers. Now, mid lane, Malphite versus Gragas. We all remember Alex Hitch's Malphite in the grand final of Intel Extreme Masters Cologne last weekend. Reckless had a bit of a still, hard time to uh, deal that with that one. <laughs> <laughs> bit of pressure from that. And actually, we can see that Red Buff here is going to be started off. And you see Mistake, he's staying with wins. He wants to make sure that he secures this buff. But at the same time, Hallelujah is doing the same thing in his jungle. So we're going to have those traits happen in the end. And God, JJ is going to get the advantage from it because he'll have the early levels too but right now we do see 
Jarvan visiting middle. Yeah, this could be dangerous. Actually, we will see Vi get over to this one, but the knockup will come in, and that is Gragas having to flash away. Flash comes down from Cryonics. Is he going to have the damage? Gets in there. First blood is picked up. Jarvan did get away. The question now is whether Wins is going to be able to finish this one off. Mistake coming in. There is a flash. Cryonics is going down here, surely. Yes, finished off by Wins. Jarvan managed to get away from that one up to uh, that turret. Mistake's not going to have the damage to finish him off, but that will be a one-for-one -one start. And great positioning by both teams right there to really make that happen. And in the end, we get an extra assist going in favor of TPS, so they get a little bit of gold or extra gold from that. But Wins also gets a nice strong star here with that kill for himself. Wow, mistake there. <laughs> it's been uh, caught out a little bit. I don't think he quite expected Hallelujah to be diving quite as deep in as he did there. Uh, this top lane obviously going to be a 2v1. Rengar all on his own. Bottom lane will be a 2v1 as well once Mistake actually gets down, but he's played a little bit more roaming in these early levels just to support where he's needed. sonda has been having a decently tough time over towards his top side. I mean, you see the, the Dark Wind bounce him multiple times up there. Obviously, he can heal it up with that Empower W, but right now he's not sitting too pretty on farm. We see, you know, Benny just doing a great job of, of keeping up, sitting at 9 CS currently, and a Shen in a solo lane in a 1v2 isn't, isn't too bad. Not too bad for him. Jarvan here headed up to this top lane ward. Just timing out there. They've actually pinged onto this one, and Vi will be coming down the lane, so they're going to try and turn this one around. The question is whether they can bait them in here under the tower. There is a ward put down that will spot Vi coming in, but may possibly be too late. That minion wave is starting to push up here. Chowie is going to make sure that that one is on the tower. Are they going to make the move? Nope. They see Vi coming in, and Hallelujah moves back around to that front side. Both these junglers have such a great read on each other to realize, or at least in Wind's part, he's probably going to get top. They have a big wave pushing. And he's just going to stay here so Zona can get some experience. Actually, importantly, the experience, just so he doesn't get pushed out of the lane right now. And he's going to be able to catch up in levels, which he's going to need. And I really want to know, what is he going to do with this Rengar once he does hit level 6? Is he going to be able to get these kills um, that he's going to need? Yeah, now we see that Rome coming down. That'll be answered a little bit later on right now, though. See Chen in this bottom lane, 2v1 scenario for him. But with Jarvan up on that top side, he knows that he's got no defense, but also no threat from the jungle since Vi is on the top side of the map as well. And it's all about turret pressure right now from SGS. They've already gotten this outer top turret down very low. Zonda, as you can see, able to heal up quite nicely there. But still, they need to be careful about this turret. You know, you're seeing TPS re respond to this in kind by trying to push down that bottom turret as fast as possible, but it's... I don't think they're going to be able to get it before SGS does. And with this three three men here, I mean, obviously Jarvan can provide a little bit more in a push since he has the attack speed off of that standard. And it looks like they will be able to get the first one, but Wins is sticking around. Yeah, Wins hanging in for this one, but with that Dark Wind coming in, constantly annoying, stopping them from uh, casting what they want to do. And this is going to be the first story of the game going down. Singapore Sentinels taking an early lead thanks to that one. It's close to that thousand gold mark. Well, it is thousand gold <laughs> and Joe I hope you're really quick on the camera here because whenever you see Chronix go in over towards that late part of the game it's gonna be very deadly and you really don't have a way of preventing him from getting it. that's what makes Malphite so strong and right now he's doing a decent job of farming up he's sitting about 28 to that 37 uh, of his opponent and as long as he keeps us up as long as he doesn't get pressure too much I'd imagine he's gonna be that threat that he needs to be uh, to to God Right, we'll see about that one. There is the turret finally going down in the bottom lane as a response to the one earlier on. So that's going to level us all pretty much back up. And now interesting to see where these duo lanes actually end up going. We can see that Lucian and Phil Six headed towards this bottom side, but Ben is actually down there as well. So uh, that may have to change here on the next recall. Does have himself that Giant's Belt in for the uh, start of things as well as Kronix. It's missing out on a little bit of CS there. Not a massive deal, but you see the SGS actually setting up here towards the blue buff as we approach that seven minute mark. Yeah, I think they're expecting Dragon to be happening here as we do have a ward going down for TPS's side as well as SGS, so they know where they are. And both teams sending their AD carry supports down here because they want to be able to have that control over this Dragon. In the meantime, Zonda's just sitting up there farming in that top side, trying to catch up a little bit, at least to his counter. But here comes... Next, on the side here, he does have a little bit of a pinch going on, but they don't want to engage for it just yet. 
Now, hallelujah playing uh, great positioning here, not really committing to one side or the other, waiting for the rest of the SGS team to get in. You can see that pink ward going to clear out all the vision, and they may just have to give this one away, and they will give this one away. That is going to go over to Cryonics on Malphite. Now the race becomes whether hallelujah can get over to his blue buff, secure that one before Vi and Gragas get involved over that side. Well, you saw right there just the pressure that Cryonics can apply by being near that blue buff. That ultimate, it's so hard to go up against. It's so hard to dodge with the flash, but... CPS, they're trying to respond. They're trying to go for it, but I'm not sure if they can make it happen. Well, with Zonda over towards that top side heading down, it looks like they're going to be able to lock it down here. And so overall, just going to have a blue trade of both teams. Yeah, really nice uh, response there from the Taipei snipers to make sure that they don't fall behind in terms of buffs. And of course, we do have Gregus in the lead in that lane, certainly in terms of the CS. That kill did come down uh, a little bit earlier on for Cryonics on Malphite. Between the AD carries is a 10 CS lead for Lucian, working his way up towards that Trinity Force. Got the Phage in there already, and a BF Sword to start for Jinx. And I want to see, Jinx should be able to do quite a bit of damage here when we do have a fight break out, but this pink ward battle that's kind of developing over towards Dragon shows that SGS wants to make maintain vision control as TPS just invested three wards over towards that top side to secure that blue buff, but now Hallelujah is just going to Push bottom here. So he just he went top, pushed a little bit earlier. Now he's just sticking with Chowie, trying to make sure that he doesn't get ganked at all. Yeah, pretty low on farm, Hallelujah, but that is the fact that he has been away for so long. We can see there the missing pings going down on middle. That's because Cryonix is currently doing his raids as well, just trying to top up that farm that he fell behind against the Gragas, as you would naturally expect, but he's going to have a nice wave pushed against him. Got that blue buff in there as well, so he should be pretty safe on that front. Top lane now, Rengar versus Shen. They're at that stage where they're just going to be bashing heads, but unless something goes wrong for one of them, we shouldn't see a kill coming in. Yeah, I, I'd, have to com I'd have to completely agree on that one. And then Zonda maybe gets a Brutalizer, then he might have the damage, but in the end, they can both sustain so well, that's going to be basically impossible. But right now, I think we're looking at potentially a level six coming in here for a fight, but next getting ganked. Yeah, and that's a lot of damage wow. coming down. Cryonic flashing away from wins as well. And that is a one versus one that we say it so often it shouldn't probably ever happen, but we are going to see down on the bottom mistake actually fall in there in the end. And that was a little bit of a sad affair of things. He couldn't quite get in there for the save, couldn't get back to the safety of his tower. And that is two quick kills actually coming out for SGS. Yeah, very fast. And with the pressure that Chronix just applied middle, it forced Wins to go up towards that middle side to help him out, which gave them a three to two advantage in bottom. But they're not able to capitalize off Dragon for it. But we did see Shen actually use his ultimate in the middle of that fight. Yeah. But he didn't actually get transported down. So he was able to counter. We do have Super, Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Yeah, oh. but it's not going to do I anything. Was, I was kind of hoping I, for I was getting to ready, to, yeah. ready to click on Fiddlesticks there, but not quite uh, in time for that one. I've seen a couple of super ultimates coming out of uh, Jinxes this past weekend. Yes, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Some really, really nice I think ones. Game number one or game number two of the, uh, of the amateur tournament that was really impressive, right from the spawn, basically, up to the top lane on the enemy side of the map. So... Certainly uh, some potential for some showmanship with that ultimate out of Jinx. Uh, right now, Hallelujah and Kaling are both waiting around this bottom side of the mid lane. We'll see if they get involved with that one with Unstoppable Force coming off cool here. Uh, cool down in just a second. And the fact is, Cryonics had his blue buff refresh with that kill as well. It was yeah. a double win for him. And we've seen how strong Malphites can be just this last weekend in Cologne. And he's at that point where he can really kind of carry it over. He's catching up in CS to next. And that means a very dangerous Malphite. But right now, you can see Kaelin, he's level 5 currently. He's been roaming around quite a bit, trying to get these wards down. He hasn't hit that 6 point that would make him so scary to, to start a team fight with. But Mistake has finally hit level 6. He will have his ultimate available. And it looks like right now, TPS maybe wants to go for a dragon. He's in a little bit of danger. He is caught out completely. We are going to see the Assault and Battery comes down. That is a kill for wins. There is the wild growth onto him as well. Hallelujah now falling very, very low. That's two kills. The question now is whether Chowie can actually get away from this one. Mistake able to get in the slows. There is a Super Mega Death Rocket to finish off. A double kill coming in for God JJ. And that is the turnaround that the Taipei uh, snipers were looking for. That was fantastic. That was amazingly well done by uh, TPS. As we even had Zonda coming down from the top side to go for a gank middle. But with those two kills, they're they're able to take Dragon now, and that gives them a huge bit of a gold lead, considering they just lost two men in those previous fights. 
Really, really well played. Leaf Jinx at 2-0-1. And if you look down the gold with that dragon being picked up there, it puts three men over a thousand and almost a thousand gold for mistake on the support to play here uh, to spend as he heads off home. So uh, there is a bloodthirster finished off by Jinx. We actually saw in the uh, in the last game in the amateur in the uh, in the amateur tournament in the final. Jinx going for the Infinity Edge mm -hmm. first. We were talking a little bit about that one, and it seems like God JJ going to go for a little bit of a different way in terms of his build path. Yeah, he, he kind of has to with the Malphite diving on top of him. He needs that extra sustain that the Bloodthirster will be to give him in these team fights. But right now, Helio trying to go for a gank on Azana here, but just look how tanky he is. That Rengar is really hard to push out of a lane right now. But now Chowy, he is the kill leader in GPL right now with 64. But TPS has been doing a good job of kind of controlling him. He has, you know, a CS advantage, obviously, since we had those lane swaps come in, but he only has that one assist. They haven't let him uh, get to that point where he can start rolling. Yeah, so Hallelujah actually just backing away from that one, knowing that probably not going to have the opportunity to lock down a Rengar, who's, uh, as you said, incredibly beefy at this point. Got that cowl in there as well. A few wards started to come out here as well from TPS. The site's still now done for Mistake. And that should help them with this tower down to really put, uh, fall some pressure yeah. on the enemy jungle. Yeah, and the easiest way to tell what a team's going to do is by their wards. And you pointed out perfectly, with those four down towards the bottom side, they want to make sure to kind of push this bottom uh, part out while leaving, you know, Zondo top lane to kind of just split push by himself so he can actually surpass uh, Shen in farm. But they're still playing very cautious right now, and SGS has been doing a good job of making sure they secure their own buffs. And they've been sending multiple people over there just to make it happen. That's nice. Cryonix getting himself. Another bit of farm obviously has fallen behind, but that's to be expected yeah. against this Gragas here, who can constantly harass with the barrel. But now he might find himself a little <laughs> bit out of position. Actually, in the end, just using that brush to his advantage will walk away without having to use anything. And he did so much damage to wins with just one or two abilities right there. That is very deadly. He's going to be a level 11 soon, too, which kind of gives SGS the opportunity to fight if they want to make it happen. But other than that, a lot of... I don't want to say a slow game, but not a lot of kills coming in just yet. His team's playing very, very safe, considering this is a best of three. So a slow game. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the gist I'm going for, Joe. Well, which is fine as well. Yeah. I mean, we have to we have to really take into consideration that these two teams know each other extremely well. They've already played twice. They're tied in the GPL uh, in head-to-head -head matchup. So uh, there is a lot on the line for this one, not just the pride, but pushing through here at the Intel Extreme Masters into the next round. There's IG waiting in the next round as well. So there's no easy games, I'm afraid, none in the pro all. bracket. Really none at all. And all these teams definitely fighting for it. We do see over towards the bottom, Wins is trying to make something happen. As you as you do see, Gajo J, he's freezing the lane. He wants to make sure to strangle Chowy of any sort of income. Because right now, there's there's only a limited amount of gold you can have on the map at once, um, which it's forcing SGS to allow Chowy to take away all the jungle camps, which is putting Hallelujah behind, which you can see reflected in the CS. So they're really strangleholding them without actually pushing too much. It's just kind of waiting them out and, and making sure that they can't farm these lanes. And that was wins and mistake just coming up towards that mid lane. But as soon as they do, they're spotted, they back straight away. Uh, we can see, I mean, Shen in this top lane, he's been pretty much pressured onto his turret this entire time. And considering that, he's actually ahead uh, over Zonda, which is pretty incredible stuff. Means that he's been doing a great job under the turret there with the pressure on him. Yeah, he's been doing fantastic. In the meantime, we do see a three man push on the middle here. And it looks like Holly wants to push them away. We do have wins on the sideline to make some sort of counter happen, but you know it, it comes down to with both these top laners just farming away, who is going to be more effective in these fights? And Zonda, I, I kind of see as being the man to do that, because if he can get on top of Chowie, who's currently level 9 right now, he can provide so much damage they could possibly burst him down, or at least get him to that point where a Gragas Barrow would clean him up, and that would give TPS a huge advantage in these fights. Well, the pressure still remains here in this mid lane. Of course, Shen can join the party, but Jinx is down in the bottom lane. Rengar up at the top. Of course, no teleport across them as there is the unstoppable force. They're going to chain everything together. They take down Gragas. There is winds coming around. Super Mega Death Rocket did come in, but SGS not really losing health from this one. They're going to pick up all three kills. It was Kaelin that was tanking up the turret. There are actually no minions there, so Hallelujah has to desperately get away, but they should have the turret here, plus those three kills. That switch, just to say, go. Just push it all in and they went with that Jarvan Malphite combo to keep them in the air the entire time. Very well done. And considering SGS was kind of on the back foot when Chow is getting limited on farm, they decided to group middle. 
and just push. And when you have Gonja J bottom farming up himself, it gives you an easy team fight. And they took advantage of that completely. Zonda, in the meantime, did bring something back here, though, for the snipers taking down the outer top lane turret. Well, he might not have such an easy time here as Chowie just coming in there, making sure that he doesn't push any further in this top lane. Uh, but the kill's really there. 3 1 2 going to uh, on Malphite. We got a kill for Lucian. There's one for Jarvan. There's one for Shen. The spread is pretty much perfect at this point for SGS. Yeah, and the assist too on top of that, especially for Kaelin. He's going to need those. And Look at that damage that Chronix does to Gajo J just right there. If he had his ultimate up, that would yeah, have been a clean killed kill. Him. Yeah. And that's how deadly a Malphite can be. And that's what Alex Sitch really showed us last week in Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. And that's what Chronix is doing right now. But T uh, Taipei Sniper is responding with a mid push themselves. Yeah, hallelujah, having to slide away, but there comes Kaelin over the wall. He's going to back up straight off of it, though. Well, at least they've managed to keep this turret alive, but how long will they be able to hold on to that one? Shen is back to A, of course, did use Stan United in that previous fight, so he's going to be pushing that bottom lane out. Rengar still pushing in the top, but they still are putting down the pressure with that four-man squad on the mid. But Cryonix is coming, he has his ultimate available, so does hallelujah, so they forced Taipei Snipers to back away here. They would have had the exact same combo they pulled off earlier on, and this time TPS being a little bit wiser, not letting that one happen, but they're going to be able to take away a blue buff here, it looks like, and that helps a little bit. It at least takes away the cooldown reduction on Cryonics, so he won't have his ultimate up as often, but look what he just picked up, a Nisi Large Rod. His ultimates are going to kill right now, and TPS, the only person strong enough to really tank that is Zonda currently. They're playing a, a bit of a sneaky game here at Dragon, which actually might mean that rather than taking a dragon outright without having to fight for it whatsoever, that they're now going to actually have to fight for that dragon, which might not be a bad thing either. They are... Uh, they've been picking up the kills. They're technically behind oh, in gold mistake. right now. Mistake is going to get caught out. There is a Cataclysm coming down. The Cullin will come in as well. Zonda diving right into the middle, and Kaelin will go down. Unstoppable Force was used at the back there, but Zonda so, so healthy, just hammering away on Chowie. Hallelujah going low. Chowie will flash away, but Zonda flashes right on top of him here. They decide, let's pick a different target. Hallelujah will be the choice. He should go down from this one. God, JJ did just pick that one up there and that will be two men down for one and that will mean a dragon for the snipers and tps i mean considering they were bottlenecked over towards blue they were able to spread out quick enough that chronix had to choose only one target he hit grogus and that's not the man he i guess he was necessarily going for because he was able to escape his life gaja j was able to do all the damage he did he's now three zero and two and tps with just that play alone gets such a huge advantage in this game that blue buff gonna be going over towards next year as well Always a bonus on that front. And look at Jinx now. We were talking about Lucian earlier on, and it started off nicely. But yeah. Jinx, 3 0 to 1800 gold to spend with already that Bloodthirster done from earlier on. The top laners all starting to get a lot more beefy as well. Zonda got the pretty much full workings here <laughs> off that Sunfire Cape, and that's the annoyance of the Rengar. Yeah, he wasn't even trying to fight him. He just wanted to get the full minion wave, and he was able to get it. And it, it still comes down to later on. What team benefits more from their top winner getting all this farm and being left alone? And Zonda kind of proved in that last fight alone that he's kind of outscaling, funny enough, a Shen. He was able to push away Chowie throughout the entire fight. He was able to zone them just by him standing there. And it helped win in the fight. So, barrels being thrown out. And Snipers still didn't quite take that tower down. Got 380 health, let's call it. At this stage, we do have Unstoppable Force back off cooldown, and God JJ mistakes still have to be ex extremely careful about that one, about whether the Malphite can actually get in there. We can see that Vi headed over towards the side now. This could be bad news. Shen at level 13, the slow comes in, actually manages to dodge away from wins, and that should get him back out to safety. That was a nice dodge, even whilst being slowed, probably the hardest ones to dodge. But the problem is that snipers have got this wave pushing and might be able to have this top turret. And it's just they didn't have the wards in their own jungle to actually transition from middle towards that top lane quick enough. So TPS is going to get some good damage on set. They're going to rotate, it looks like, back over to middle, and that will be a guaranteed turret. And I guess that's their, kind of their game plan. They don't want to go up against SGS under a turret like that. When you have a Malphite, they just want to rotate, force you to rotate with them, and then just pick them off one by one, at least the turrets. Well, wave's cleared out. Rest of the team moving in. Well, SGS have already moved across that side as well. We saw there the zap onto Cryonics already doing quite a lot of damage. Picked up the uh, workings of that Phantom Dancer here. Has got JJ 
once that comes in, he's going to be ripping chunks out of them when it comes to the fights. Oh, yeah, he's definitely going to be hurting quite a bit. And it's it's pretty much Cryonic's job to hit him with that ultimate. And then you have to have Hylia follow up with that, maybe even get a Shenton across it. The thing is, like, they don't have a lot of damage. It's kind of just like a one-trick pony where Cryonic's, it's, it's just dependent on his ultimate alone. If he hits a good one, they can win the fights. If he kind of whiffs it a little bit, then TPS can kind of sustain it and just out-damage it over time. So that turret finally dies. It's taken a while here, probably about five and a half, six minutes since that turret was actually uh, first knocked low.